Maybe sometime other than God will bring it back. But, you know, the devil has ways of manipulating things to where things aren't the way you want them to, and sometimes uh -huh. you have no control over it. God is in control. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. So, praise you, brother. Uh, we had two ambulance runs. We have one ambulance. So I went and checked on the other person, and the family members are going to take them to the hospital, so we're good. So, God. anyway. Yeah. If everything, everything comes out here, like it comes in here, we're going to have a better style your horse and hold on tight. So. <laughs> no, I'll freeze it. <laughs> you know, I mean, a lot of people, I know you do too, that they quote scripture. But you go look, it's not exactly the way the Bible says it is. They quote scripture kind of part way and they change it. It didn't always mean the same thing. So... Yes. Yes. Anyway, so today we're going to talk about hiding the word in our heart. Mm -hmm. The enemy, if he had his way, would destroy each and every one of us. Amen. He tried with Jesus. He tempted you. He used the word of God against Jesus. But Jesus knew the word and used it against him. Amen. So if we don't know what the scripture says, when Satan comes to us and tempts us, Sometimes it may sound okay. It might be okay. You know, it didn't talk about that exactly in the Bible, so it must be okay. You know, there, sin can be divided up into three basic categories. The Bible says it's the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. All three of those things, the sin, will fall into one of those categories. Uh -huh. You know, and we have to get this flesh under control. We have to get it under the blood. Oh, yeah. Paul, one of the greatest apostles in the Bible world, two-thirds of the New Testament says, I crucify the flesh daily. Mm -hmm. Those things that I want to do, I don't do. Those things that I don't want to do, I do. Oh, wretched man that I am. That's yeah. a para paraphrased version of it. He struggled with it. Jesus is the only one who is without sin, the only sinless one. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23, you know, says that the way you know sin is death, but the gift of God mm -hmm. is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, if the Bible, as a lot of people want you to believe, is just a myth, it's just a story, it's just to help you live a good life, why is it banned in 57 countries? Why do they not want it taught in our schools? Why do they not? Why are they afraid of it? It was just a myth. Aesop's fables are not afraid of them. We didn't read them in school. There's something in the word that the enemy does not want us to know. It's the truth. Yeah. The truth will set us free. Yeah. Psalm 119. Start reading this verse one. Uh, Verse 1, excuse me, verse 9. Psalms 119, verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Uh -huh. Not just part of it, not just a little bit, but my whole heart yeah. have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. Amen. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of my mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy, of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. We have to... Stay in the word continuously. I'm not saying you have to be in the word when you go to work and read it when you're trying to do this. But I, I always promise you, those of us who have um, manuals at work that tell us how to do our job, those who have protocols, those who have things that describe what our job is, mm -hmm. know that. We have to know it forwards and backwards, upside and downward to do our job right. Yet we don't know what the word of God says. This is more important than anything we have at work. Amen. This 
If we will follow it, we'll get us to heaven. Yes. It might get us promotions and raises and stuff like that, but that's not what we're here for. We're here to see souls won to Jesus Christ. Amen. I kind of think of sometimes Christianity is like going to the swimming pool or to the ocean. <laughs> you stick your foot in it. Uh, you got to get your foot in there and you get foot kind of used to it and you know, you get up to your knees and you're like, no, 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 it's okay, you know. I got just lucky. I was at the ocean. I did good. I went, I went to the lake, you know. Some people want just about that much Christianity. Just enough to know how to speak the words, how to <laughs> write phrases, to write, you know, things like this, you know. Have the good outward appearance. Know what to do, what to say. But the Bible says that inside, if we're not saved, we're full of dead man bones. It's wretched. It's nasty. It stinks. Mm. It's dead. Yeah. And dead faith will get you to hell as fast as anything. Amen. Now, we as Christians and a lot of uh, and a lot of other people, I guess most everybody, when someone passes away, we almost automatically say they're in a better place. They're not suffering anymore. They're not any pain. They're you know in heaven. I'll, I'll see them someday. Truth of the matter is, ever since Adam and Eve, a majority of people who have passed on, who have died, have gone to hell. Because the Bible says that wide is the way, narrow is the gate, and few there are that find it. But the path to hell is wide. It's easy to follow. Now, using some, um, some song lyrics, ACDC had one highway to hell. <laughs> Led Zeppelin had Stairway to Heaven. Which one do you think is going to get used the most? <laughs> it's so much easier to appease the flesh, to give the flesh what it wants. Oh, yeah. We aren't just thrown into deep sin. You know, it's like testing the water. You know, that wasn't so bad, you know. The Bible says he who sinned, you know, would surely die. I didn't die. It must be okay. You know, when I get older, I'll change. I'll accept Jesus when I get old before I die. I can enjoy life while I can. We are not guaranteed another second, another oh, breath. Right. You know, Sister Pat, you know, I was with her when she got the news. You know, we had talked about him going back to the hospital, you know, and getting some more treatments, you know, getting some other things done. You go to the cemetery, and if, if you could ask those people, how much time did you have to prepare? How much, how much advance notice did you have? Majority of them didn't have any advance notice. They may have known they were sick, but they didn't know when their last time was. You know, it's kind of funny. I, get, I call, make a, a payment, use my credit card, or, you know, buy something. You know, they ask you all the information on your credit card, and they say, when, they ask me, when's your expiration date? Yeah. Uh, I... Don't know when's your expiration date. I know the date on my card, but I don't know when my expiration date is. I don't know when I'm leaving this world. We could, we might not even be out of this, this service today. Jesus may come back. The thing is, are we ready? Do we do we know for assurance deep down in our knower that we're going to heaven? Yeah. We can, but do we? Matthew 4, 1 through 11. I know it's kind of a long way. This is, Jesus was being tempted. He knew the scripture. Yes. He had just got baptized. He was in the wilderness fasting for 40 days. Then Jesus was led of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, I can't even go a day sometimes without going, oh man. You know, it's like my backbone, my belly, or my stomach, they're rubbing against each other, and it's just, it's rough. <laughs> but when you're truly fasting, it's, it's easy. Mm. When you really, truly put your mind in God, it's easy. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't do long fasts, sometimes three days at a time, but, you know, the first day is kind of rough, the, the old devil's oh, really yeah. trying to get you, you know, there's no one watching. 
Uh -huh. He can go get a sandwich. Uh -huh. I want you to know. Yes, yes. That apple pie sure looks good. <laughs> Carmen, what's your desserts? <laughs> you know, but when you start praying, you start putting your body in subjection. Your, your yeah. spirit is in control of your body. Yeah. The body is, you know, the spirit is weak, but the body is so mm -hmm. willing to do the sin. The yeah. spirit is not nearly as strong sometimes as our flesh is. We have to get our, our body under control of the spirit. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hundred. And when the tempter, the enemy of our soul, the devil, came to him, he said, If, catch that, if thou be the Son of God, trying to put doubt in his mind. Uh -huh. yep. You know, he's going to tell to us sometimes, did God really say that? Yeah. Is that really, did you really mean that? They did the same thing to Eve. You know, you're not really going to die. He, he lies to us. He is the father of all lies. Mm. If God be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and sitteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus again said unto him, It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh him up unto an exceedingly high mountain, and showeth him all the kings of the world and the glory of them, and saith unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then he said unto Satan, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Amen. The devil leaveth him. Behold, angels came and ministered unto him. You know, I saw a little thing on Facebook about Jesus feeding the 5,000. Yeah. How would that be today? Jesus has the fish and the bread. Mm -hmm. Is that gluten-free bread? <laughs> has that fish been tested for mercury? <laughs> you know, oh, God. people are, I'm tired of this political correctness. I'm tired of all this stuff. You know, if Jesus in the flesh was here today and they would come to him and do the same things that, like on TV uh -huh. and uh, we, we as Christians are expected, almost forced, to uh -huh. accept the nasty filth that the world is putting on us. Uh -huh. You know, all this alternate lifestyle, you know, I'm not going to get into all the LGBT, whatever the things others are. We're forced to accept that, or we are prejudiced, or we are homophobic, or whatever the case may be. You know, it's time we as Christians call it what it is. Sin is sin. Yep. Not going to sugarcoat it, not going to, you know, make it look nice with little decorations and frills and stuff. Sin is sin. Doesn't matter what you call it. Yeah. Sin is sin. There's no big sin, there's no little sin. Mm -hmm. We've all sinned. Yeah. We probably have got something in our life right now that we haven't confessed and we've done, said, thought. We need to make sure we're right with God when that time comes. We never know when that time is. We have to be ready at all times to go. John 10.10 10 oh, yeah. is very, very familiar to all of us. I'm going to go to verse 9. I am the door. Mm -hmm. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find <coughs> pastor. Verse 10. The thief, yeah. Satan, the enemy of our soul, comes not but to steal, to kill, and destroy. Uh -huh. I, God, Jesus, am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. There's not a family here that's not affected by drugs, alcohol, you know, promiscuous living, you know, all kinds of sin. There's not a family here that's not affected somehow by it. Satan is trying to destroy the family, yeah. the churches, our nation, yeah. the whole world. Mm -hmm. But we know 
Matthew 24 tells us, you know, that in the last days you know, what's going to happen in the end times. Things to watch for, things to look for. If you watch the news, you see these things happening right before us. We're being told, we are being warned these things are happening. But we have to be aware. We have to know that the things of this earth are temporal. Yeah. We as humans and Christians care more about what we put into our bodies and food for drink. We care more about what we wear for clothes. We care more about the car we drive. We care more about the people we associate with than we do the Word of God. The Word of God is the most important thing that we can read, that we can study, that we can know. If you don't know the truth, anything you hear may sound right. You've got to know what the Word says. Yes. Amen. The Bible doesn't talk about, uh, there's several things people you know, I consider sin. I'm not going to say what's sin and what's not. The Bible tells you what sin is. But if you're not sure, there's a good chance it is. If you're doing something or thinking something or whatever, you're not sure if it's right or not, I guarantee it's probably wrong. Uh -huh. Because if it's right, you're going to know it. Uh -huh. You do. I know. I get this voice in my head that so I should get that extra twenty dollars in the offering play up over above my tithe, but you know the Bible says ten percent. That's all it says. And the devil's going, no, you can keep that. You know, go to Dairy Queen, baby. You don't need that. But God's saying, get it. Oh, God. If you don't do it, if you don't do what God tells you to do, it's sin. Mm -hmm. You won't get the blessings. He who know what to do good and do it to not, to him it is sin. Very, very plain, Matthew 7, 12. Mm -hmm. But each and every one of us are called to be watchmen. Ezekiel chapter 33, verses mm -hmm. 1 through 6. And again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say to them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, they blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. Yeah. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. You know, if you go to church often enough, you watch TV evangelists, some of them, you have heard the truth. You have heard Jesus coming. You've heard that since the time before we all could walk, probably. The disciples are saying, you know, all this stuff we've heard from the beginning, when, when, is he, when are you coming? When are you going to set up your kingdom on earth? And the Bible is full of hints. We don't know the exact day. We don't know the exact hour. Right. If we knew when a thief was coming to your house, right. You have the SWAT team and everybody else inside. You have your guns locked and loaded and waiting for the to come in. Once they hop in your house, then you can shoot. You can't do them outside your house. You've got to do it inside your house. Oh, you know, you, you be prepared. Yeah. You know, we've, I've heard it. Pastor said it here. When they sound the tornado sirens, you know, you, you've probably been watching it and heard it on the news or TV or someplace. Tornado storms are coming on tornado watch, tornado warning. Get everything ready. Yeah. You go to your Freddy hole under the house or something. Hurricanes coming. They give you several days' notice a lot of times. You batten down the hatches. You, you board up your houses. You get out of Dodge. We've been hearing Jesus is coming. And we don't do a thing about it. We don't tell our friends. We don't tell our neighbors. We don't tell our family. We don't tell our enemies. We don't tell anybody. I don't want to hurt their feelings. Oh, my goodness. They might laugh at me. They might hurt my feelings. 
You know, Jesus didn't care what they said. He told the truth. Yeah. You know, when the buyers and sellers in the temple, he kicked them out. Yeah. It's supposed to be a house of prayer and he made a den of thieves. Mm -hmm. Yes, we may have sin in our life. We confess that sin, but Jesus did not hold it against us once we confess it. But if we don't confess it, we die in our sins. Yeah. You know, that's between you and a, and a just God. I'm not the judge. We will be judged by a true, holy, righteous judge who has no sin. Mm -hmm. So, it is imperative for each and every one of us to know for a fact that our sins are forgiven. Our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You can have your name in every church role. You can have your name in all kinds of different things like that. But if you're not, your name is not written in the land book of life, all the things on this earth won't count for a hill of beans. I know I'm, you know, probably talking to a lot of people in the choir, but there's someone who needs to hear this. Yes, amen. You know, I don't want to stand before, before God and say, you know, I preached, I prayed for people, I've done this, I've done that, you know, I've done good works, now, you know, I put money in the offering and, went to church. you know, but I don't want him to say, what was your name again? I don't find you on the, I don't find you on the list here. What was your name again? Mm. Depart from me. You worker of iniquity, I never knew you. Mm. You know, you can serve God all your life, the very last minute, you know, say, forget it, I want nothing to do with it, There's, it's a lie, it's a hoax, it's a myth, and you die in your sin. Mm. God has never had you live a life, like, please don't do this, but take a life, who's, someone who's been sinning all their life and accept Jesus on their deathbed, mm. since the last minute, turn their back on him. Jesus can use you where you are, what you're doing, no matter who you are. Amen. You know, we've all had things in our life that hold us down. But Jesus is here to let you, to free you of all of those things. You know, the, the fear that we have of testifying or fear of witnessing to someone, it's a lie. Mm -hmm. You know, I kind of sort of named this this message is liar, liar, pants on fire. Because the enemy of our soul is a liar. Amen, amen. Yeah. He wants you to believe a lie and be damned. He didn't care a thing about you. That's right. You know, you, you, a little bit of a sin. You know, that was kind of nice. The Bible says that there's pleasure in sin for a season. Mm -hmm. right. That season is short-lived. Yes, it is. I can guarantee you someone who's had a life of drug addiction or alcoholism or something, you know, if they knew what their end would be. You know, I know there's, there's people that the family, generational curses, people that are born with these addictions in their life. There's things in their life that they, had, they, they didn't ask for. You know, it, and God, we thank God, you know, for the Alcoholics Anonymous and the, uh, Narcotics Anonymous. They helped. They're a good help for people. Yes, it is. But the one who truly can take everything away is Jesus. Yes. Amen. Yeah. And the liar, the enemy of our soul, wants you to just live your life the way you want to. Just be yourself. Mm -hmm. Be you. You know, enjoy life. You don't have to go to church. You can go to the lake. That can be your tabernacle. That can be your place where you can, you can commune with God there. You know, you can go to a football game, you know, and act like a fool. But when you try and act like a fool for Jesus, you know, people make fun of you. They shun you. They don't want nothing to do with you. We had a pastor one time that was walking in our, in our parade. He had a little sign to have over the front and back. He had the front of it, I'm a fool for Jesus. 
You know, he's walking by, everybody's laughing at him, and we go out back, and on the back of it, who's full are you? <laughs> you know, so we have to know what the scripture says about everything. I mean, I, uh, where I work, I have protocols. I got three different ones I have to pretty well memorize. So if a certain medical problem comes up, I know what medication to give. I know what dosages and stuff. And if I don't know, they have a book called a protocol book. And a lot of times people call that the Bible. That's not the Bible. It's just something we have to go by. Yeah. This is the truth. Yeah. Yeah. This is the unadulterated whole word of God. Yes. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Yes. But then we don't want to hide it there. We want to share it. Yes. If we see someone who's having a problem, we'll have the scripture up here to know what to share with them. Amen. Then we're going, well, you know, um, can I call you back later tonight? I'm going to go do some reading and find out for sure what I can do to help you. And I just feel sorry for you. Exactly, you know. Uh, let me call my pastor. That's a good one. Call a pastor. He'll come talk to you. He knows those stuff. <laughs> but see, we all are required to share what we have. Those who have a lot are required to share a lot. Those who have a little, share what you have. The more you share, the more you step out in faith in God. I'm scared to tell these people about you. Mm. I don't know what they're going to do. You know, it, it, it's okay to be honest with God. He wants you to be honest with Him. Yeah. God, I'm scared. My flesh right now, I'm scared. I'm, I don't know what's going to happen. But I trust you. I need you right now. Yeah. That's exactly the way it was when I was in jail. I knew I was going to penitentiary for five to ten years. If I'm going to go... God, i got to have you with me. I can't do this. I'm too pretty. I'm too neat. I'm too good looking. I'm just, you know, I'm too... I don't know what everybody's laughing at, but anyway. You know, I needed him. Amen. You know, when I accepted Jesus Christ on February 14th, 1983, three days later, I was walking out of jail. Man. On probation, but still, I was out. I was free. Yeah. You know, the Son has made free, shall be free in me. Yeah. You know, and I haven't looked back from that day. Praise God. Awesome. But let me ask you a question. I want you to raise your hands. I don't want you to answer out loud. Are you, right now, today, as close to God and a fire for God as you were the day you accepted Him? If you're not, whose fault is that? His fault or our fault? It's ours. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He will stick with us closer than our brother. He is calling us. Come unto me. All oh, you're weary, tired, hungry, naked, all this, whatever the problem is, come to me and I will take care of it. Like a mother hen, put your chicks under the wing. Protecting them, nurturing them. If we will read his word, he will show us how to live this life for him. Amen. This is our guidance. This is our text. This is everything we have need of right here. Amen. But if we don't know it, yeah. we're going to miss it. Amen. If I don't know what my protocols, in fact, the ambulance say, and I do something wrong and somebody has a bad Reaction, or I kill someone? Did you not read this? It says right here you're supposed to do blah, blah, you know, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you know, I thought I knew better. I thought I'd try something different. I tried to try it my own way. I forget who, had, who did it. I forget there was a song that says, me and God have our own. I did it my way. Well, another one says, uh, yeah. me and God have our own thing going or something like that. You know, I know what I'm doing. You know, just kind of saying, I did it my way. I remember that was uh, one of the rat packs. I forget what it was. Frank Sinatra, I did it my way. Well, you do it your way, you're going to go find your way on your way to hell. You know, you pack your bags up and just go and be like the, the rich man who was there, you know, feasting lavishly. Oh, boy. 
You know, and the poor man, Lazarus, was at his gate, and he was hungry. He was waiting for the scraps to be brought out. You know, eating the scraps that fell from the king's, from the rich man's table. Yeah, yeah. Donald's may not even eating it. He got mm -hmm. leftovers over the leftovers. Mm -hmm. You know, and it says that the Lazarus died and he carried up into Abraham's bosom. The rich man died and woke up in hell. Yeah. He looked across the chasm over here and seeing mm -hmm. Lazarus said. Father Abraham, send Lazarus, dip his finger in the water and cool my tongue for I'm in torment in these flames. Mm -hmm. People don't take hell literally, yeah, seriously. Right. There is a hell to shun, there's a heaven to gain, and we can only do it if we accept Jesus Christ and read his word. Amen. We have to know the word. Amen. If we don't do it, we will be deceived. Mm -hmm. Quickly, finish up here. Amen. <laughs> I've heard that before somewhere. I don't know where I've heard that. Man. Time to eat. Let's go. Out of here. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, has a roaring lion walking about, seeking whom he may devour. He don't care who you are. Right. He doesn't care what you are. Right. He wants you in hell. Mm -hmm. If he has to go, he's going to take as many of, him, of us with him if he can. Amen. If I'm going to heaven, I want to take as many as I can with me. Uh -huh. The more the merrier, right? <laughs> you know, I, when I was in high school, in college, we always heard, you know, I've probably said it too several times, you know, have a big party in hell. All our people, all our friends get together and have a big party in hell. Well, I guarantee you it will not be a party in hell. There will be a celebration in heaven. There will be a feast like we've never imagined. Woo! Amen. I'm getting hungry right now thinking about it. <laughs> the marriage supper of the Lamb. Can you imagine what that's going to be like? But you can only enjoy it if you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Amen. If you live your life for Him, you can enjoy the goodness of this life plus the life ahead of us. I've said this before. If you are not a Christian, this is the only heaven you will ever know. But if you are a Christian, this is the only hell you will ever know. So, the choice is ours. Do you want heaven or do you want hell? Do you want to believe the one who wrote the book, the author, the finish of our faith, we want to believe the liar, the deceiver, who was kicked out of, of heaven. I will set my throne above the Most High. He got kicked out. Yeah. You want to follow a loser or a winner? The yeah. young boy was asking his grandfather, why do you read the Bible all the time? Yeah. Well, I get this kind of studying for my final exam. <laughs> you know, this day is coming to an end very, very quickly. We don't know when that time is. So it behooves us, each and every one of us, to know, as Sister Frances says quite often, know when you're knower. Yes. You, know, you gotta know that you know that you know that you're saved. Amen. If you're not saved, if you're even a question of whether you are or not, right now is the time to make sure that you are right with God. Yeah. Doesn't matter what your family past is, what your past is. Doesn't matter what your job is. You can be a CEO. You can be, a, you know, richest person in the world. Mm -hmm. If you don't know Jesus, you're going to split hell wide open. No. Come on. So we're just going to close with this: For God so loved you and me, that he gave his only begotten son, Amen. that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Not in hell, but in heaven. Amen. If you can imagine the streets that they used, the material they used to make the streets down here, some of the cheapest material. <laughs> if you use that same correlation in heaven, and pure gold on the streets there, the Amen. cheapest material, I'm looking forward to it. Amen. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. So, Pastor, I'm going to relinquish the mic to you. Praise God. 